All right, I'm going to go over some of these comments here. I'm going to skip this first one. Uh, Roderick says, uh, Jimmy, I think the issue people have accepting one saved, always saved, isn't that their works saved them. It's the fear of being punished by Father when one does wrong, and the idea people have once saved, always saved, means license to run amok, sinning willfully. All right, let me blow this up here. I can't even see it myself. Let me go one one higher here. Can I go two higher? I know I'm getting that. Sorry. Okay. I believe the verses about Lord Lord we've. I believe the verses about Lord Lord we've done many wonderful works is mainly for the leaders and teachers, uh, not the sincere sheep. Well, it's not for the sincere sincere sheep. Uh, you got that right. Okay. Uh, but where you're wrong is it's not just about the leaders. Where are we at here? Leaders and teachers. Okay. Although it's applicable to them. Uh, see, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? This word here, many, means a lot. It means most people, a whole lot of people. And it's not just leaders and teachers. and It's a whole lot of people, okay? A whole lot of people trusting in themselves, believing, I'm a good person. I deserve heaven. And <clears throat> no, you're not. You're not a good person. You don't deserve heaven. And if that's the way you think you're never going to make it, what Jesus has done, he's done for us because we can't do it ourselves. Once saved, always saved is true. But, see, there's that but. At making a butt out of yourself. It's hard for someone to see nothing they can do or stop doing can buy acceptance from God. It's a free gift. They must admit they're not worthy. That's why, yeah, that, that's why the law is there to show us that we are failures, basically. Uh, we all fall short or we all come short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. We've all violated the law and we all need a savior all right that's what the law does it shows us that we need a savior and that's who jesus is he is our savior so we can't put our faith in ourselves we put our faith in the lord jesus christ and accept his works because he first loved us when one is saved it should be natural to keep the commandments <clears throat> excuse me of jesus which are love thy neighbor believe on the lord jesus christ avoid fornication yeah so all the law all the the prophets and the law stem from love god love one another all right that's the no, let me see if I can find that verse. Let me think. For some reason, I'm thinking some. The word some is in there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Where is that at? It's not going to be in here now. Every time I try to find something. Oh, right there. That's it right there. Isn't it? Oops. Um, what are the great commandments? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay. 
on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Right? Okay. So everything is based on that. Uh, so everything stems from that, right? Uh, it's a natural, it'll be a natural or let's say spiritual desire to please him by keep calling upon him and avoid lust, okay? While pursuing fruits of the spirit. Finally, and sadly, as S.A. mentioned recently in chat, they hated Paul for preaching once saved, always saved too. Yeah, they killed the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus preached once saved, always saved. <laughs> and, I mean, they, they punished him, yeah. They beat him, they spit on him, they ridiculed him, and they killed him. Because he preached, once saved, always saved. <laughs> now, you know, we, we see, I mean, let's be honest, that's what happened. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Once saved, always saved. Alright, so who is the only begotten Son? It's Jesus. <laughs> okay, and what's it mean to believe in him? Uh, that means you have everlasting life. That means believe in Jesus and you have everlasting life. That means once saved, always saved. That's why they killed him. Because, uh, you know, they wanted to make him out to be a sinner. And they accused him, or they, you know, said well, him, he was equal with God, right? Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said, also, that God was his father, making himself equal with God. <laughs> so they killed Jesus because he taught once saved, always saved. That, was, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, of course, they're, if they're going to kill, if they're going to hate Jesus, they're going to hate Paul as well. And they're going to hate you, and they definitely hate me too. Right, okay. And then, uh, I probably went too long on that. Amy says uh, it's kind after kind in the Bible. It doesn't make sense that there would be three different races of people. Remember, Noah was perfect in his generations. Okay, so uh, it's only my speculation that we have three different skull types. And I, I'm, I'm not, you know, this, the word races, I, I, don't, I don't really understand what that means. When I think of a race, I think of, people running. Okay, so we got three different school types. There's no denying that. And then so the question is how how is it where does that originate from? Because everybody living today came from Japheth, Ham and Shem and their three wives. Alright, and so then you'll we read like in uh, Genesis eleven where the you know God uh, divided the people into nations and gave them their own language. I don't believe God physically transformed people into three different skull types. I think they, them three different uh, skull types come from those three men, the three sons of Noah. All right. And so, and you're right, it's kind after kind. Like so we read in Genesis 1. Oops, not Genesis. Well, that Genesis 11 is where uh, God divides them into nations and so forth. But, but Genesis 1, uh, let's see. Go to day 5. Uh, like God created the whales and every living creature that moveth, which is which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Okay. So, uh, F-O, or Amy, F-O, J-C is right. But um, I would be very interested in hearing what somebody else thinks about why we have three different skull types, very distinct skull types. And it, I don't want to hear nothing about UFO aliens. I don't want to hear anything about half breed angels. We're on none of that nonsense, okay? These are not 
half human beings. Come on. And uh, let's see, excellence. Okay, let me see. Let's see. Do you know? Yeah, uh, those guys <laughs> we just got to talk about. They uh, forbidden me from preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I said I was not welcome there. They, <laughs> so I don't go there anymore. They don't want me. I don't. I don't have to be there. If you can't trust the power of Jesus Christ shed blood, there is nothing you can trust. I don't want to call people heretics for not believing in eternal security, but they are extremely confused. Yeah, no, no question about it. Now, I, I, I always like to be, you know, you know graceful in, in a sort of way. And if somebody is a new believer, I can understand them, you know, searching and questioning and trying to take an angle or take a side, that sort of thing, and challenging once they always say to. But when you've been a believer for a while, uh, it, it should be pretty obvious to you. And if you're if you're to the point where you're preaching on a pulpit, or if you're, you know, if you claim to be a believer for for a while. And you're preaching against once saved, always saved. You're not saved, all right? Because the Spirit is drawing you. It draws all of us to know the gospel and to teach it. And if you claim to be a Christian and you still don't get it after a while, uh, I, there's no way you're saved. Uh, you're faking it, <laughs> and you, you know. Again, you're trusting yourself. You're believing you're a good person. And you're believing you deserve heaven. Oh, I'm a good person. No, you're not a good person. Okay. How are we doing on time? Okay, I got two minutes. I'm in favor of teaching once saved, always saved, with a disclaimer. Now, that's that's like uh, Roder in his butt. You got you got too much butt going on, okay? It's, it's very simple. Once you are saved, you are sealed and secure forever. No exceptions. You can't screw it up, man. If you could screw it up, I would screw it up. Guaranteed. But you can't screw it up. All that come, Jesus says, all that come to me, I shall lose nothing. And I will in no wise cast out. So even if you want it out, you can't get out. You're stuck. And that's just too doggone bad. All that the Father give me shall come to me, and him that cometh me I will in no wise cast out. All right. Yeah, for those once is for those who say they were once saved, but now have turned back to unbelief. And for those who are mocking God by putting salvation in their back pocket and living life like they're not saved, while they're playing a fire and the best they can hope for is being so saved as by fire. I think the butt is necessary. Now, get your butt out of it. Because we can't see people's heart and can't tell who's actually been sealed and who's not right. And I know for a fact those scriptures that made me question my salvation brought me back to the word on my knees. Okay, so um, you know, stay off your butt. All right, stay away from the butts. All right. And then, um, you know, you notice here, where's this at here? Uh, by people putting salvation in their back pocket and living like they're not saved. Okay, this is the. The common mistake you see so many people make is that they're, people that reject once saved, always saved, are always pointing their finger at somebody else. Saying, well, that person, that's a sinner, that's a backslider, that's a, you know, this sort of thing. And uh, they're sinning because they think it's okay to sin. Well, what about yourself? Because... The person that rejects once saved, always saved, they're also a sinner. And they also have sin. And so they're just they're nothing but hypocrites. 
and that's what hypocrites do, and we're warned about hypocrites all throughout the Bible. Okay, I might have to make a part two, because I wanted to touch on this very first one.